Hello and welcome to the 30k channel, a channel dedicated to games set in the Horus Heresy. I'm your host David Brains and today with me we have Richard and his Imperial Fists. Hi guys. And we have David with his Death Guard and Crystalis Knight allies. Hi guys. Brilliant stuff. Now I will say one thing, thank you so much for coming on the channel guys. You're only local to Peterborough as well aren't you? So super. for me it's fantastic and you've brought two beautiful armies. I mean exceptional, really exceptional. Thank, thank you. you. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Great stuff. So, so Richard, we'll start with you. You've brought Imperial Fist for us. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the army. Um, well, I started, uh, originally I played Black Templars okay. um, in 40k, and I, I kind of moved on to Imperial Fist through that. Um, and originally I was going to do Death Guard yes. um, as my 30k army, but then I was just drawn back to the Imperial Fists um, and just found... Yeah. I'm a real loyalist, I love, you know, <laughs> I didn't want to do a traitor legion really and I, I'm mad about Sigismund, he's like the he's guy great, to me, great he's the guy yeah. to me, love that guy. Um, uh, Dawn's, Dawn's pretty good as well and I like what Dawn does on Terra, so, um, and it was just the, the, the strength of the legion and the way they don't back down, they just keep going, yep. um, so they just appealed to me and I've just constantly grown them and kept building them and building them Crazy. from there. Oh, they're awesome, so, man. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. It's good. And, David, you brought Death Guard. Yes. Yeah, so, my Death Guard, um, I've been playing 40k for quite a long time. Got into 30k before it became super popular. So, a lot of mine are the resin models. Um, my passion started really when I read some of the Horace Heresy books. I read uh, Flight of the Eisenstein. Mm. And that, for me, Great. set my, my passion on fire with mm. the Death Guard, a little of the Garrow stuff. Although, unfortunately, Mortarians sort of whispered in my ear, <laughs> and, I've, and I've gone a bit rogue now, a bit traitor. So, yeah, so that was it, really, and that's uh, that's how I got into collecting Death Guard, and I've been kind of painting them ever since. Great stuff. And, and you've bought some uh, Allied Attachment of Chrysaurus Knights as well, haven't you? Yes, uh, because of the size of the game we're doing today, a lot of my Death Guard are infantry-based, uh, just so you guys get to see something different apart from a rel relentless line of infantry. I brought some Knights along. Um, it's kind of a similar list because uh, I've played... Uh, the Imperial Fist before, yeah. and we had a good match, so we're hoping for a bit of a grudge match because mm. the Death Guard went down, but this time <laughs> they're going to come back strong. Very close game, very close game, but I just, just pipped him, so he's going for revenge today. That's good, <laughs> that's really good. And then the list as well, you know, Richard, you've got loads of firepower, haven't you? You've got the Lightning, and you've got the, the Vindy Dreads, uh, sorry, the the laser destroyers mm. and the Spartan stuff. You've got a lot of firepower, haven't you? Yeah, I'd, I, I had an idea that he might use the two knights, um, and... I kind of needed something to deal with them, um, and it was either possibly go for a Lord of War detachment with knights myself, mm -hmm. or some other big tanks, but I thought, with the laser destroyers, ordnance weapons, they're actually making their debut today, so oh, we'll see how they do, <laughs> they see how they do, um, and obviously I've got the lightning with the Kraken penetrator missiles, mm. and uh, the Scorpius can join in, and the two quads, so... I think I've got enough to deal with it, but it's going to be tough. Yeah. I've got to stop them from getting too close. And and that's mm. the thing with knights. They're super tough, and they are really rapid as well. 12-inch yeah. move, you know, they, they yeah. are tough. Um, but it's also worth noting today that a Games Workshop put an FAQ about knights and about yes. Yes. stubby arms yes. and about where they go. So so tell us what we're doing about that. Well, in, in relation to that, obviously we know it's important to play the rules as they're written. Mm. However, with that in mind, we've but I've agreed with my opponent today. There will be a little bit of leeway. We're not going to get a protractor out and so watch out. <laughs> yeah. oh, you, you're sort of one in, one degree out. You can't fire at that. So we're going to use it. The arms move up to a certain amount out, as we can see there, yeah. and we're going to kind of play it like that, um, just to keep things fun and to to stop the game stopping and starting so much. Absolutely. Because because that that narrow corridor right in front of a knight is just really bizarre, isn't it? Because you know, even with your own arms, you can. Move them about. Yeah, yeah. So there's no way you can stand in front of a knight and it's not going to shoot you. But it's just, I understand 
from uh, people perhaps into the competition side of, of the game, and it's very yeah. important to mm. them. Um, however, today it's just about having a bit of fun yeah. and having two armies, so we don't want to get bogged down too much by getting a protractor out. We just want to <laughs> yeah. be shooting stuff and watching stuff die. It's not cool. Well, the weapon moves enough, and if you just go down the gun line, I think yeah. it's it's a pretty good arc anyway, and it's it's not overpowered if you know what I mean. Absolutely. So I think I think it'll work fine. Cool. Okay. So we just thought we'd set that out straight at the beginning of the game, just in case we get any comments later on saying about the new rules and stuff. But but that's how we've uh, that's how we're ruling it today. Uh, but hopefully you've got a little bit more information about these guys and their armies. We're now going to do their lists and go into detail about what they're taking and do the rights of war and all these special conditions. And uh, we'll see you after that. Two thousand five hundred points of Imperial fists using the Stone Gauntlet right of war, led by Sigismund the First Captain. My HQ choice today is Sigismund, First Captain of the Imperial Fist. He's an absolute beast in combat. He's joined today by my first elite choice, which is nine Terminators in Cataphracty Terminator armor. Uh, five of them have got shields, the rest have got assorted weapons. My second elite choice today is two Rapier Quad Launchers with Shatter sh Shells as an upgrade. My troop choices today are two 10-man Breacher Squads. One Breach Squad is equipped with two Melter Guns, the other is equipped with Melter Gun and Graviton Gun. And the sergeants have artificer armor and power weapons. My fast attack choice is a lightning strike fighter. This comes equipped with four Kraken penetrator missiles, phosphorex bombs, battle servitor control, and ground tracking auguries. My first heavy support choice is the Scorpius. He comes box standard. Next up is the Leviathan siege dreadnought. He has armored ceramite, two heavy flamers, a siege drill, and a siege claw. And then finally, I have the two Vindicator laser destroyer tanks, and they come box standard. And finally, we have the Spartan assault tank. This is a dedicated transport for the Terminator squad. It comes with armored ceramite and a dozer blade. Introducing two and a half thousand points of Death Guard. They're my unbroken blades. My Death Guard, by uh, my hand shall justice be delivered, and Doom shall stalk a thousand tables. Leading this glorious horde, I've got Mortarian, the favoured son, and I've got a Praetor in Cataphracty Termi Terminator armour with a Paragon blade. Moving into the Elite slots, I've got a Contemptor Mortis Dreadnought with two Kerry's Assault Cannons. Going into my troops selection, first up I've got a 10-man Breacher Squad, with two flamers and a sergeant with motor bombs. My second troop selection is a legion tactical squad. It's 10 man strong and the sergeant again has got motor bombs. Going into my heavy support choices, my first one was a grave warden heavy support squad with a five man uh, strong with one uh, heavy flamer. Dedicated transport linked to that is the Spartan land raider with armored ceramite, flare shield, and it's got a pintle mounted bolter. Going on to my allies that I've taken today. Firstly, I've got a Knight Paladin. You have paid for the Seneschal upgrade onto him, so he'll be actually a HQ, uh, which will increase his invulnerable save and weapon skill and ballistic skill. And fulfilling the troop slot in my allies detachment is a further Knight Paladin uh, with no additional upgrades. <laughs> Okay, guys, welcome back. Uh, we've gone through the list so you know exactly what these two guys bring in their armies, and you've seen the battlefield as well. So the way I wrote this mission was that uh, the mechanic and Thunderhawk has crash-landed in this foreign land, and a recovery, seat, a recovery team has been sent to recover all the various bits and bobs on board. Uh, and then they set up a little staging area and a defence platform and various bits and bobs. And the Mechanicum have now left, but they forgot to switch off the homing beacon. And then all of a sudden these two guys have been flying around in space. And they've, they've seen the beacon and they've both investigated to see what's happening. So this is, this is how we've, we've come along. So the mission uh, we're playing today is Dominion. And we chose three particular points on the battlefield for the objectives. 
and the deployment we're using is search and destroy so mm -hmm. it's kind of the square boxes opposite each other so you guys can have a look in the rule book and check those out now uh david yeah. how do you think this game is going to play out for you is there any particular rules that you're using that will help you in the game or yeah well as a as a death guard player naturally we're going to be relentless <laughs> we don't care how many we lose we're going to roll forward in a slow white wave <laughs> but key rules, really, that I'll be using during the game in reference to my Death Guard and things for people to be aware of, are uh, they're remorseless, so they're immune to fear and automatically pass pinning checks they're mm. called to make. Um, as a son of Barbarous, they can re-roll their failed dangerous terrain tests. Yes. And then I'll also use the chem munitions, so my flamers will have shred and get hot. Oof. So good. <laughs> I've not used a right of war. I'm just using Age of Darkness template. So there's no other rules really for, for me to use in reference to that. Great stuff. And, and how do you get on with those uh, gets hot shred flamers? Do you lose many troops to lose wounds or? I've not really had many problems to be honest in reference to it. Um, whether that's just lucky rolls, who knows? Today mm. I'll be the, the, de the I'll be the king of ones <laughs> today, no doubt. But um, yeah, the shred is handy. It's a flamer template, so yeah. it automatically hits. Just make that one roll to make sure it doesn't get hot. Um, I find them a, a useful weapon. Okay, great. Well, that's good. I'll hopefully see them in action very soon. Uh, and Richard, uh, Imperial Fist, you know, how do you think this is going to play it for you? Um, I think it's going to be a bit tough. Um, there's two or three Lord of Wars, mm. kind of, on the table. Um, I have got a game plan, but you should see that as we play. Sure. Um, but I think I'm set up to, to take it on quite well. Um, there's a few rules that I need to, to point out, sure. um, mainly with the Imperial Fist, I get a thing called di Disciplined Fire, which basically all my troops with bolt weapons mm. um, get plus one to their ballistic skill. That's great. Um, which is really handy, yeah. especially if I'm getting close with his troops, um, just being able to rapid fire in those shots and get the extra hits can make a massive difference. Um, the other one is to the bitter end. So this mission obviously goes for five turns, yep. and then you roll off to see if it goes for a sixth turn. Mm. But with the bitter end rule in the Imperial Fist Army, my opponent can choose for the game to go to the sixth turn. So obviously if it's a bit nail-binding and I'm just ahead, he could have that extra turn just to try and pull it back. Mm. Yeah, it's quite an interesting thing. You, 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 when you play a random game, like, you always try and make it end on the turn, it does, but you have to keep in the back of your mind, well, what if we do go to another turn? Yes, and so yeah. it, 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 it kind of adds a little bit of extra so it drama. It gives them that freedom just to, to push the game a bit more if need be. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'm using, I'm using the Stone Gauntlet right of war today. Mm. Um, the biggest point with the Stone Gauntlet is obviously I'm using quite a few guys with shields. Um, and there's a special rule which. If I've got one guy within two inches of two other guys, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit technical, but you'll see during the game, yep. um, my guys get plus one toughness. Yeah, that's pretty good. So it's pretty handy. It's pretty good. It's naughty, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's On naughty. top of that, my shield guys, when they charge, get the Hammer of Wrath special roll. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So... <laughs> it's like shoving a big shield in your face. So yeah, pretty cool. so it's pretty handy. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Now also, it's worth mentioning just about the mission. So we are playing Dominion. Uh, so you score your objective on the on your turn, on the start of your turn, yeah. not the end. So that's a very key difference. So you always have to plan two turns ahead, don't you, mm. to make sure that you're on that and you can survive yeah. a turn of shooting. So yeah. that's quite a key point. Uh, we're using the alternative objective terrain. So we've just got one marked in terrain, but we'll go through that and you'll see that no problem at all. Mm -hmm. uh, conditions, we've got Slay the Warlord, and we've got attrition. So slaying the warlord confers D3 additional victory points. And then the attrition is um, whoever just saw the highest number of units gets D3 as well. Plus there's a bonus for killing Mortarian. Yes, yeah. Well, at the beginning of the Legion books, there's a little extra special rule uh, called Price of Failure. So Price of Failure is an effect in this game, which unfortunately, David, it does concede a few more victory points, doesn't it, for that, for that reason? I'd be worried if it wasn't. Mortarian and a Primarch. <laughs> he he knows no fear, and uh, he shall uh, he shall not be worried about this this one victory point <laughs> malarkey. He shall be going straight forward, scythe in hand to do some damage. Excellent. And and do you know what? I'm I'm looking at Death Guard army myself, and I'm really excited to see this army perform. And in particular, Mortarian's got this awesome. I don't know what to call it the vanishing move, where he just yeah oh, blinks yes. out, yeah. moves ten inches. So <laughs> moving forward into that, I'll just quickly run people through. One of the rules, um, one of my favourite rules, and why I pick Mortarian <laughs> is basically he's got a rule called Shadow of the Reaper. That's it. Yeah. And uh, it describes in the fluff that Mortarian is terrifying, naturally, as a Primarch. And, uh, but he's also spectral. 
a lot, I know a lot of Fluffy disappears into the shadow and then reappears. And yeah. to represent this in the game, in lieu of making a shooting or run attack, he can take a leadership <laughs> test and as long as he passes, redeploy within 10 inches. <gasps> um, and he can still charge. Yes. <laughs> so now, the point I was going to is he can then still choose to charge. So I like to think of it as a creepy uncle. He disappears in the shadow <laughs> and then reappears with, your, with his hand on your shoulder and a scythe around your neck. And I'm looking at you, Imperial Fist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I cannot wait for this game. It's going to be great. We've got two amazing armies, two great guys, uh, and I think it's going to be a good game. So we will see you uh, just before the game starts. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're deployed. We're all ready to go. The Imperial Fist are currently going first. Um, Richard, would you like first turn? Yes, please. You really yeah, want first definitely. turn? Definitely, yeah. But Dave, you're equally keen, I can imagine. Mortarian says this cannot be allowed, so he <laughs> shall attempt to seize the initiative now. Fantastic. <laughs> right, no. let, let's get it on. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's Best do of luck, this. Mate. Go let's on. do this for the camera. Oh, oh, it's a three. I didn't want it okay. anyway. I didn't want okay. it anyway. That's good. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Imperial Fist movement, turn one. Okay, I've moved my breacher squad up six inches, trying to get as near to that objective as I can. It's going to be a bit risky with some of the shots coming in, but should be okay. The Scorpius has stayed still so that he gets his full shots. The two laser destroyers have also stayed still, so I should be able to get my shots off on that. The quad mortars, again, have stayed still, but I've lined them up, so ready to shoot some breaches. So the quad laser destroyers, yeah, all lined up on the night, ready for some shots. Then I've got the Spartan again, lined up on the night, ready to get some shots in. The other breach squad has moved up, and the Leviathan's moved up, ready to get into action. Fired both my quad mortars into the breacher squad and managed to cause 11 hits. But sadly, with his rerolls to his saves, because they got void hardened armor, I managed only to kill two of them. The two laser destroyer indicators are, far, are overcharging and going to fire three shots each into the night. There's strength nine AP2 twin link shots with ordnance, so 2d6 picking the highest. So I've rolled first to see if I hit. Three of them hit so far, so I'm going to re-roll with the twin-linked rule, the other three. So I get five hits in total. Okay guys, I'm going to now try and save these uh, vicious shots from the Imperial Fists with my knight. But the shield is facing forward. I'm going to take the glancing hit first of all. It's a three plus invulnerable because it's the knight Senishao. So he saves the, uh, the glancing hit. He's now got four penetrating hits, which he's going to attempt to save. Um, so we'll move on to that again. Three plus. Come on. All saved. What a hero. Enough said. Enough said. Really? Okay. Take a bow, son. Take wow. Bow. Right. Because I overcharged my two laser destroyers, I have to make a roll for each tank. On a roll of a one, I take a whole point. So let's do that now. And they're fine. My Spartans just fired its two quad las cannons at the night who jammily passed away those saves earlier. Um, I managed to get four hits with the twin linked rule, and I managed to cause one glance and three penetrating hits. Again, so the poor knight, who's done nothing to no one, is getting picked on. So again, as I've run through before, he's a knight seneschal, three up in vulnerable save. First of all, trying to save the glance, which he saves, and then taking three penetrating hits. Again, threes. Ah, oh, one's gone through. Okay, so it's a strength 9 AP2 weapon, 
So I'm going to roll on the vehicle damage table and we plus one to this for AP2. So that's a six. So it's just one hole point. Well, it's actually going to, I believe, strip two hole points from me, one for the penetrating hit um, and then one for the additional roll, uh, in my understanding, with super heavy vehicles. So the Leviathan has just ran six inches into a bit of cover and I've also ran the Breacher Squad. I only got a couple of inches, but it's not too bad. In summary, now that's the end of my turn, slightly gutted the laser destroyers. They got all those penetrating hits on the night, but free up in one, there's nothing to laugh at. Um, the Spartan managed to take one hole point off, so it's not the end of the world, but could have done with a little bit more. Um, but all in all, slightly gutted, but it's just the start of the game. Death Guard, turn one movement. The uh, Spartan Land Raider moved up first, uh, opened its doors and jettisoned its uh, cargo. Mortarian, uh, like a sprinter out the blocks, has leapt forward, uh, ready to engage in some glorious combat. The knight, having weathered the storm of barrage of shots, only managed to stumble forward with a triple one. So he's, uh, he's limped forward two inches and climbed up, but he's now positioned taunting the laser destroyers after their lack of damage. The infantry has shifted forward six, uh, slowly moving towards the objective, trying to get me some victory points, supported by uh, the Contemptor. Next to move up was the second knight, that swung round so it can get some shooting in and stay well clear of the uh, Leviathan Dread with its destructor claws as it suffered at uh, the hands of that before. Infantry again, just moving forward, trying to make some ground and capture some objectives. We're positioned now for a bit of shooting, I suspect a bit of running, and fingers crossed, some hand hand combat. Death Guard shooting, turn one. The Knights opened up with a savage barrage straight into the uh, Breacher squad that was moving up the flank to uh, attack my tactical squad. The brave Imperial Fist Sergeant was bravely getting ready to bellow and send his troops forward. And then his face got annihilated with a double one on the Art of Facer roll and he was removed. And I inflicted uh, seven casualties in total. So good round of shooting. He's done well so far. He's Mortarian is pleased. Next up, the Death Guard shooting. This Spartan's going to open up on the uh, squad that's trying to savage the knight, the laser destroyers. The heavy bolter obviously isn't going to be effective, so it's not going to bother firing. I've got the two twin link lads cannons, it's only move six, so they can fire at full ballistic skill. Uh, so we're going to roll off now. Okay, one miss so far, so we'll re roll that one. Okay, so three hits from that. We're then looking strength nine, armor value 13 at the front, so it'll be fours to glance and sixes to dance. Ah, oh, nothing. You can't win them all, can you? Finally, a bit of luck. <laughs> Next up, Mortarian flying out the Spartan is gonna show them how, how the Spartan, how, how it's done rather than just spectacularly missing. So this is the interesting little rule we talked about earlier. He's gonna try and use his Shadow of the Reaper. So that's in lieu of making a shooting or run attack. He needs to take a leadership test and he can then basically teleport 10 inches any direction ignoring intervening terrain. So we're just going to make that leadership test now and fingers crossed I think we all know where he's going. He passes with a leadership of 10. The Death Guard uh, Contempt is going to open up now. While it was stalking about it spotted a small gap through the uh, crates and uh, bits and pieces, and it can see a dirty great big yellow leviathan coming its way. So it's opened up with all 12 shots, and it's managed to hit with 10 times. Um, it's gonna need rending, so uh, we're straight on to hopefully some damage rolls now, and let's see how it goes. So we've got one six out of all of that. We we're hoping for more, but we can't be greedy. And then we'll see what we need here. So yes, so I've got one single penetrating hit. Right, so I've got the penetrating hit to save. Um, it's actually got four up in vulnerable save, so I'm going to take it on that because it's better than the cover we've worked out. So here comes the four up save, and that's all good. Oh, it loves it, it's laughing. Next up for the Death Guard shoot in turn one was my Knight Seneschal. Enraged by being blasted to pieces, he's uh, unleashed a torrent of shots on the, the artillery pieces of the Imperial Fists and blown them to smithereens, leaving two marines ready to scuttle back into cover and hide from his wrath. Death 
Death Guard assault phase. Mortarian has gloriously charged in, getting an 11. He's ploughed straight into the wall of yellow. And uh, the brave Imperial Fists sergeant has chosen to muscle his way to the front and, uh, and challenge him to a duel. So results of the Death Guard combat. Mortarian chopped down two Imperial Fists. However, credit to them, they've stood their ground and decided they want to continue to fight. They've not inflicted any wounds back, so they've piled in and there'll be another round of fun to be had in the Imperial Fist turn as well. In summary, for the uh, Death Guard turn in general, I'm pretty pleased with it all. Um, we've, had, we've moved forward, we've advanced, we've done a bit of shooting, we've had some successes, we've had some stuff that's not gone so well, but overall, we've made progress, and more importantly as Death Guard, We've moved forward and we've killed some people. Imperial Fist turn two. I've done my reserve roll and thankfully my lightning has come on and is aiming for the side armor on that knight. My Leviathan has moved up, ready to charge some breaches. Uh, I've got a couple of squads just moved around. So see the two guys remaining in the breach squad just getting ready to run to cover. And my Spartans moved back and Sigismund and his Terminator squad have jumped out, ready to call Mortarion into a challenge as soon as possible. Other than that, everything else is standing still, ready to fire. So all good. Peel Fist turn two shooting. My Spartan has lined up its quad shots at the Imperial Knight. I've done this in this order to make him choose his shield facing and he's decided to go with the front shield. I've done my four shots, got four hits, but sadly didn't do any damage. But now it's lined up really well for my lightning to shoot his side armor with the Kraken penetrating missiles. The lightning has lined up its Kraken penetrating missiles on the side armor of the Imperial Knight. I've fired off all four shots, hit him with three, and I managed to get three penetrating hits. Sadly, the dice gods weren't with me and it was only three hull points. Better luck next time. The two laser destroyers have decided to overcharge, so fired six shots into the Imperial Knight, that's down to two hull points. I managed to get four penetrating hits and one glance off, and thankfully he managed to fail two of those saves, so the Imperial Knight blew up. Result. Scorpius lined up a shot at the Mortis Contemptor. Now he can't see it, so they will scatter, I got four shots, which was very lucky, managed to hit with one, but sadly didn't get the glance on it or the penetrate. So the, the Mortis is still safe. The Leviathan is now set up to do his charge in the assault phase. The reason I didn't shoot the Breacher squad is that I'm quite legendary for failing short charges, especially with big robots. So I decided to just throw him in, see what he can do to the squad. Imperial Fist turned to Assault, thankfully managed to get the Assault off with the Leviathan on the Breacher Squad, managing to kill one guy with the Hammer of Wrath on the way in. Now I'm going to unleash my six attacks for my charge on the Breachers and see if I can kill some off. Okay, six attacks. Needing freeze to hit, that's pretty good. And then twos to wound. Okay, that's five wounds. Right, well that wasn't the role we were hoping for, so let's try and salvage something with their brave board and shields, uh, fighting off his snipping claw. And I needed fives, and uh, unfortunately that's only one saved, so that will be four casualties. The Imperial Fist Leviathan did his job, he killed five marines and then ran them down with the sweeping advance, and has just moved up one inch just to get ready for the next turn. Imperial Fist's Assault on Mortarion, eight attacks, and managed to cause one wound, which is pretty good. So, Mortarion's re uh, retaliation after uh, having a wound inflicted on him was, uh, he was a bit tired after all that running, and unfortunately he's only managed to kill one with all his swinging. He did get eight attacks, which was five for his base, and then three because of his reaping blows in contact with. So he's not covered himself in glory, and he is a little bit tired, but he's saving it for his turn. But look at those saving throws. I'm really happy with that. It could have gone a lot worse, but managed to save three guys. Only one died. We drew combat. This is true. Some might say they were <laughs> cowering behind their boarding shields, praying that Sigismund turns up to save them, but hey. We don't say that. <laughs> Death Guard, turn two movement. The 
implacable advance continues. My tactical squad have now rolled up onto this objective, so they're really looking to secure that and start scoring me some points. The knight has uh, seen the brave Death Guard squad cut down in their prime, and he's come stomping forward to give him a bit of backup. The Contemptor is just uh, heard a, a flying engine over his head and he's just having a quick scan of the skies now with his guns ready to mow into uh, that lightning. The Spartan has edged forward again and unleashed the second wave of Death Guard punishment with the Terminators with their implacable advance have swarmed over that objective with the aim of hopefully scoring me some more VPs in that regard. And uh, Mortarian continues his reaping of the yellow wheat as they, uh, they slowly fall to his scythe. He's like a, a farmer with his back bent in the field, just cutting them down. Death Guard, turn two shooting. I've decided to open up with the knight. I had made a slight faux pas. I was hoping to target his Terminator squad as they're nice and bunched. However, let it be a lesson to all of us. Check your line of sight. I've moved him so the crate obscures that. So instead, I went for what I feel is another threat to my uh, objective scoring troops, uh, which is the Scorpius. So I put two shots into that. Uh, with the rapid fire battle cannon and taking a couple of hull points. I've also got the heavy stubber and being a super heavy I've elected to put that into the leviathan. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, stick a chainsaw ripper thing through it shortly. Next death guard action is to take the flying death ray that's flying around the skies straight out so I'm going to use my targeting array on the contemptor to choose to sky fire this turn and I'm going to put 12 shots straight up at it. Just ask uh, is it going to jink? Uh, yeah, definitely going to jink. Uh, with the Agile rule, I get plus one to my jink roll, so a free up will be pretty handy for this. Okie doke. So, two plus to hit, see how we do. So, ones go away. It's not too bad, we're hoping for a few more. And then we're going to need fives to glance and sixes to penetrate. So, we've got two penetrating hits and one glancing hit only. I'm going to take my Jinx saves against them now. i am opted to do the penetrating hits first and then I'll roll for the glance. So penetrating hits on the free up, one goes through, and then here's the glance. Right, one penetrating hit. Great, now also because of deadly cargo you're carrying Phosphex bombs, so you've already suffered one hull point, so on a roll of a six the um, the lightning explodes. So David, do you want to do that because you're targeting the lightning? Yep. So we're rolling to see if it explodes rather than the actual damage result first of yes. all. Yes. And it doesn't. doesn't. So then we want to see the damage result, which was... Ah, oh, a one. So we got very lucky there. Down to one whole point, but still in the game. Death Guard Spartans uh, unleashed its torrent of weapons next. I've used Machine Spirit to fire the one set of Quad Laz cannons into the Leviathan. Scored two good hits and a penetrating hit, but he's uh, used his shield saves and saved both of them unbelievably. The Spartan then targeted the one uh, Vindicator uh, that it can see. It's had a shot at that and stripped off a whole point. Unfortunately, had another poor damage roll, but that's just the way it goes. And uh, I think the Terminators now, some of them are in its side arc, so I'm gonna use those crack grenades to try and strip another one or two points off it. Finally, up for the Death Guard, the Terminators have used their crack grenades. Only some of them were in the side arc, two of them in total. So I've ploughed some shots into him. And again, can you believe it? He's made some saves and it's got away scot-free. No damage done, sadly. Death Guard, assault phase, turn two. Sadly, it was filled full of tragedy and joyous events. The night boldly striding forward, ready to slam into that Leviathan. Uh, obviously had second thoughts and rolled a three for his charge, sadly. So he's fluffed his chance. However, Mortarian's redeemed it for me, thankfully. And uh, like a farmer in the field, he's weeped down those yellow bits of wheat and uh, discretion is the better part of valor. So he's used his consolidation move just to skitter back around the corner, have a little chat with the lads about what's gonna happen next. Imperial Fist, movement turn three. My Scorpius is staying still, ready to rain some fire down on the tactical squad at the other end of the table. My two laser destroyers have pivoted, lining up some shots on the Imperial Knight. My Terminator squad with Sigismund decided to jump back into the Spartan, which has just lined up some shots on the Mortis Contempt of Dreadnought. My Leviathan has moved forward, trying to get in combat with the Grave Wardens on the tactical objective. 
and my two remaining breaches in that in the squad on their own have just run in towards the objective hoping to survive this turn. Also my lightning because it was snap shooting this turn has decided to fly off the table and we'll come back on next turn. Imperial Fist turn one shooting. The Scorpius lined up its shots on the on the tactical squad at the other end of the table. Sadly, there was quite a big scatter, but did manage to get one hit on the Imperial Knight, but sadly couldn't get any wounds on it or hull points. The Spartan has fired its four quad las cannons at the Mortis Contemptor and only managed a measly glance on the side armor after getting four hits on it. So a bit gutted about that. The two laser destroyers then unloaded their shots on the Imperial Knight. Now one of them was snap shooting, the other one was fine, but sadly again only managed one measly glance on the Imperial Knight, but there was a couple of good saving throws from my opponent. Imperial Fist Assault Phase, turn three. My Leviathan is now going to attempt to charge the Grave Wardens and I'm pretty legendary at failing short charges. This is an eight inch charge. So fingers crossed here, I really need this to go off. So here we go. Oh, one inch, one inch. It makes all the difference. <laughs> I'm, I'm disappointed for you. Don't Gutted, worry, we'll but it's true to form. That was the average on the two dice. It's the way it goes. Death Guard, turn three, movement. Start of the turn, I've captured two, two victory points. Firstly, I've taken one uh, with my tactical squad, who've now got their spades out. They're digging in and staying in there for the long haul. The Knight has moved forward uh, onto the objective because he's a troop, so he'll be looking to capture some victory points for me next turn. He is also chasing the Leviathan, which is skittering away. I think it had the Terminators in its eyes. The Mortis Contempt has moved up. Now we can see the back of the uh, Leviathan. He's feeling a bit braver as they move past the smoking corpse of the uh, other knight. The Spartan was about six, seven inches away from the Leviathan, so it's promptly whacked it in reverse and gone as far out of that mess as it can. And then the Terminators, which are the second unit with their implacable advance that have captured me a victory point this turn, have uh, boldly moved away from the Leviathan and are also digging in for the long haul, hopefully get me some more victory points. Mortarian, after having a word with his boys, telling them what to do and where to stay, he's whipped round the corner because he wants to go and make some more friends. Death Guard shooting turn three. Tactical squad, as they'd not moved uh, and spied two little Imperial fists sneaking across that rock, decided to lock and load and uh, they used their Fury of the Legion rule to effectively fire twice. Um, they were all outside 12 and one couldn't see, so I had two sets of nine into that squad. They were riddled and their corpses hit the floor. So the Contempt of Mortis has strided around the corner, it's opened up with its cannons, and it's managed to get four penetrating hits straight into the back of that Leviathan. And now we're gonna need some invulnerable saves for that Leviathan, otherwise it's going down. Please, Dawn, please, give me some four-ups. Oh, one ah, goes through. One goes through, but what's it gonna do? That's the important thing. It is AP2, so it's this plus one. For the Warmaster! Ah! Five, weapon, weapon destroyed. destroyed. The fallout from those invulnerable saves then, I've managed to damage a weapon, which is uh, blown off its sea drill, so vehicles suddenly feel a lot safer around it. Next up to shoot was the Knight Paladin the troop one. Um, we fired the heavy stubber straight into the back of the uh, Leviathan. My thought process behind that, it allowed me to charge if I need to. And then the rapid fire battle cannon has targeted the squad of Vindicators. Uh, it scored four hits. Um, because of their high front armor, I've only managed to get um, some hits through to destroy one of them. So the other one is still in order, full hull points. Next up for the Death Guard shooting, we had the Spartan, bravely reversed, it then fired its las cannons using machine spirit and uh, it's popped the sh shots into the Spartan. Uh, sadly, I only got one penetrating hit and uh, the Imperial Fists uh, saved like a hero with their cover saves. Death Guard, turn three assault phase. Uh, finishing off the shooting phase, Mortarian took his leadership test. Shadow of the Reaper right up next to that Scorpius, which has been a, a bane to my infantry. 
and promptly scythed it in half with the two marines cowering behind it. Buoyed by this uh, success, the knight charged in uh, to meet the leviathan, which was already damaged, one arm gone. We thought, we thought the danger was eliminated. Uh, sadly, the dice gods, anything can happen. I've uh, ripped into it, but left it with one hole point. And uh, sadly, the Imperial Fist Leviathan retaliated then with its snippy snip claw. And uh, over to my colleague. Got very lucky, managed to get two sixes on the penetrate, which caused another D3 each. And I took out the remaining hole points. Very lucky, but I'm really pleased with that combat. It was a good result, good result for the Imperial Fists. But overall, that's just the way it goes in combat sometimes. Imperial Fist movement turn four. The Lightning has come back into play, hoping to do some damage on the Spartan in the future, but has initially dropped some Phosphorex bombs onto the tactical squad of the Death Guard. Now Death Guard against Phosphorex get a four up, feel no pain. And sadly he managed to make a couple of those, but managed to take one guy out and leave a couple of dangerous terrain templates. The Leviathan has moved up, ready to fire his melter gun into the side of the Mortis, and then if need be, charge. The Spartan has backed up, lined up on Mortarian and unloaded his cargo of Sigismund and the Terminators, ready to charge into Mortarian and bring him down. And the Laser Destroyer again has turned around, lined up a shot on Mortarian and is hopefully going to take a couple of wounds off before Sigismund goes in and finishes him off. Imperial Fist, turn four shooting. The Lightning is lined up the Spartan for a shot with its Twin Link Laz Cannon and is hopefully going to pop it in one shot. So here we go, we need twos to hit. I need a five to glance and a six to penetrate. No, I do get a reroll because of Tank Hunter. And I get the six. The weapon is AP2, so I'm fishing for a six here. I'm hoping to blow this tank up. And it's just immobilized. The Mortis is no more. The one-armed Leviathan has let loose with its melter gun, got the hit, got the pen, rolled a six, bye-bye Mortis. Combined fire from the Spartan and the Laser Destroyer into Mortarian has managed to take off three wounds. I'm really happy with that. And now Sigismund and his Terminators are hoping to pull off this charge and take Mortarian out. Imperial Fist, turn four, Assault Phase. So Sigismund and his boys have managed to get the charge off over the Scorpius. Now to make it a bit easier model-wise, rather than bouncing on top of the Scorpius, we've taken it away and we've put some terrain down just to, so we know it's difficult. Sigismund is challenged Mortarian, and Mortarian has accepted. So now Sigismund, being of higher initiative, is now going to get his attacks off first. So Sigismund has five attacks, and I'm hitting on fours because of the same weapon skill. Now, when I'm in a challenge, Imperial Fist rule, I get to re-roll ones. So I'm going to re-roll these two, plus my weapon is mastercrafted, so I'm going to re-roll all three of these. And he fours, and I'm unlucky. Now, I need fives to wound, because Mortarian's toughness seven, and I'm strength six. And no, I'm a bit unlucky with Sigismund that time. Right then, time for a Mortarian to retaliate. He's nimbly dodged those attacks, and now he's got his five for base. He's got four people around him, so because of his reaping blow, he's got an additional attacks there. So he's going to need fours to hit, because it's Sigismund, and then he's just going to need his uh, twos to wound. So let's see how it goes down with the dice gods. Oh, the ones, the lord of ones. So we'll get them removed. There's still a few hits there, so there's hope yet. Looking for those twos to force the invulnerable save. And oh, there's another two. It's not, not a brilliant result, but there's some saves to be made. Sigismund will now try and save these with his four up in run, and he's an eternal warrior, so he won't instant die on any of these. And he saves all three. Brilliant. The rest of my Terminators managed to get their attacks off. 28 attacks and managed to cause three wounds on Mortarian. He's down to one wound, and Sigismund's going to make him pay next turn. Death Guard, turn four movement. The tactical squad took a couple of dangerous terrain tests, which they passed. They edged back and then scored me a victory point for being on that objective. 
The Spartans are mobilized, so it's just sat, sat there looking at things it's going to be shooting in a few minutes. And then the Terminator squad, Mortarian's got on the old Neurovox and told his uh, Praetor he needs to uh, haul ass and come and have a bit of help because he uh, might have bitten off more than he can chew. However, as they started their turn on the objective, they've scored and they're now conga lining to assist their Primarch. Death Guard, turn four shooting. The immobilized Spartan uh, has opened up with one of its quad las cannons and it's gone straight into the side of the Spartan and blown that weapon straight off. Short and sweet shooting phase for the Death Guard, now moving into turn four shoot, um, assault phase. We're looking, we've pre-measured, it's a three inch charge. However, one of the Terminators at the back is gonna to have to cut across the Thunderhawk. So I'm happy to take an additional two inches. So five inches to get in and save Mortarian's bacon. Ah, in by miles. Don't worry Mortarian, we're coming. Death Guard in the assault now. Um, help has arrived, however, with uh, Sigismund having a higher initiative, he does get to uh, try and slap me about a bit first with his sword. So we're fingers crossed that Mortarian is going to survive to uh, dispense some justice. Sigismund hitting on fours. Mastercrafted, so I get to re-roll that dice. So all four hit. I now need fives to wound. And I get one. Oh, he's got the important one. Mortarian now has a four up in one save and I can make him re-roll it with Sigismund special rules. Come on, Mortarian, you're the hero that I need. Yes! And you can re-roll that. Here we go. The tension couldn't be higher. Ah! Brilliant. Sigismund taking out the Primarch Mortarian in a challenge. That's how you do it. Death Guard assault then. The dust settled. A Primarch's dead. A Terminator squad's been destroyed. And a Praetor's running with, a, with his tail between his legs. It's a, technically, it's a tactical retreat at this stage. Uh, Mortarian's been mortally wounded and teleported back up to the Terminus, Terminus Est. But it's not looking good down that flank. So we'll just have to see. Imperial Fist, turn five movement. The Leviathan has moved up, hopefully going to get a 12 inch charge on those pesky tactical marines. The lightning turned and has moved down to have a cheeky shot at the Praetor, try and wipe him off the table. The Spartan and the Laser Destroyer have both lined up on the tactical squad, ready to do some damage. Sigismund has set himself up to charge the Praetor if he survives and take him out in the challenge. And the Terminators are running for that objective, hoping that we go for another turn and they can get a victory point. Imperial Fist, turn five shooting and assault phase. The Lightning lined up its last cans on the Praetor and managed to take him out with the one shot. The Laser Destroyer and the Spartan combined their shots to take on that tactical squad at the other end of the table and managed to take out two guys. The Leviathan fired its melter gun and managed to take out one guy. Now the Leviathan is gonna attempt to make a 12 inch charge on the tactical squad. Here we go, Dawn, please. No, and that's the Imperial Fist turn five. Gutted, but it's a 12 inch charge. I'm quite happy with how things are going at the moment. And let's see if it goes on to another turn for me. Death Guard, turn five, movement, short and sweet. The uh, squad that had gone to ground, the tactical squads got back up and is uh, still digging in with their trenches, hoping to survive. The immobilized Spartan can't move. So moving swiftly onto the shooting phase, I'm going to machine spirit one set of las cannons onto the back of the Leviathan, and then one set of las cannons is going to shoot up at the flyer and try and take that out, hopefully, along with the heavy bolters. So starting with the Leviathan, two shots, twin linked. Here we go. Two hits. Okay. Now I need threes to glance, fours to dance. Oh, that's a double one. <sighs> The war master has turned. The warp is fickle. The warp is fickle. So hopefully we'll have more luck with this flyer business then. So the last cannon's going to shoot up. So I'm going to give my opponent the chance to declare whether they want to jink. I will definitely be jinking. Okie doke. So 
we're looking at sixes to hit. We scored one hit, we get a reroll because it's twin linked. Okay, so it's just the one hit, and then we're going to need twos to glance, threes to dance, and we're on the dance floor. So let's see if that jink can save it. Okay, I need a free up because I've got the agile roll. Here we go. And ah, it. curses, curses. So my plan is defeated. Um, there'll be no assault this turn, so that's going to be the end of the turn. Uh, there was the heavy bolters as well. Um, I suppose we might as well fire them, see what we can do. Oh, two hits. Perhaps I shouldn't have written them off so early. Um, we've got the twin linked options. Let's see if we can get one more, which we don't. Uh, and then we're gonna need sixes for these. There's nothing there. So sadly, that is the end of the turn. And I think the best the death card can do is pray that the game ends because it's looking grim times for them, grim times. So guys, that's the, the end of the fifth turn, which is the end of the fixed number of turns. It is now the variable length option to go to an extra sixth turn. I'm praying to the warp that the, this is the end of it. However, we need to roll and it's gonna be a four up to see if the game continues. Now, Richard, do, do you want a sixth turn? I definitely want a sixth turn. I think the game's pretty tight at the moment, but if I can get a sixth turn, I could really finish this game off. And David, what about you? Well, the, the sons of uh, Mortarian have not had a, a good, they had a good start, but I think they're starting to struggle a bit now. Uh, their lack of units is starting to tell the, the attrition's worn me down. So ideally it needs to end. Okay, Richard, let's have a roll. Okay, four plus, come on Dawn. And it ends. Oh, no. It's a good game no. and it's still all to play for. In the victory points, it's still looking close. So we're gonna come back in a minute and let you know how it all ended. Well, welcome back. What one hell of a game. Death Guard, Imperial Fist. I mean, I have to say, from the start, when I saw the list, I thought Death Guard's got it. Mortarian, two knights, Spartan, loaded with Terminators. It's just going to smash through the Imperial Fist line and do him. But, but the final victory points were seven to the Imperial Fist and five to the Death Guard. <sighs> So it it's all, very close. It did. Very it, close. It all came down to the D3 roll. So mm. you got Warlord and you rolled D3 for that. Yes. Yep. And you got the Attrition. And I rolled the D3 and got two more points for that. Yep. And then I took out Mortarian. Yep. So I got bonus points for that. And yeah, I'm pretty surprised. It was good. The way it started, but I'm, I'm chuffed. Absolutely. I'm very chuffed. But it's also worth note as well that you didn't score any victory points for objectives, <laughs> did you? <laughs> I didn't get near the objectives no. till turn five, and sadly there wasn't a turn six. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, was, that was a shame, but I'm, I'm happy. But I'm happy it. the way things come out. I said at the start of the game I'd probably have to go for a table in, and I was very <laughs> close. I was very close. <laughs> and, and David, you did really well securing those objectives. You know, you really played to the mission. Yeah, I mean... I knew what I had to do when I looked on the board. Uh, Sigismund and a big group of Terminators were always going to be difficult to kill. Mm. I did have the fun bus loaded up, which uh, <laughs> launched uh, as planned him out there. But all credit to Rich. He um, handled dealing with the Primarch very skillfully. Yep. He used his army to slowly wear him down. And when he's at a point where he's vulnerable to one of the named characters, he's thrown him in there and yep. done, his, done the deed, unfortunately. He did a good job. But, but yeah, generally speaking, the, the game went as I planned it. We sat on our objectives, we scored victory points, and we sent our aggressive units at the board. Yeah. The dice weren't with me, so it didn't happen, and Rich handled them well. And that's the key as well. You played to the mission. So you, so mm. from a, of a mission perspective, you played it 100% because you got five, I think it was five victory points for yes. the mission. Yeah. But it was just, you know, Richard pipped you to the post on those D3 rolls. I, I really, uh, I, I wanted to try for the mission. Um, <laughs> I didn't really have a chance because a knight made short work of one of my units, yeah. of Breaches, and then Mortarian, although they did well against him, three turns, um, She'll eventually save. took out the other one. So um, I'd, I'm i happy I scraped a win, but yeah. um, it was pretty brutal. There was a lot of death on the table. I think it was a really good close game, particularly when you look at the list and you think, oh, okay, maybe that one's got a bit of the edge over the other. But really, mm -hmm. when it actually came down to it, I think it was a really... You know, you had some great firepower, yes, but you yes. had some serious punch with the Knights and the, and the Spartan loaded full of stuff. So mm -hmm. I think it was a really great game. And I, ho I hope you guys at home enjoyed it too.
Now, uh, you've brought a couple of models out front. So, Richard, you've brought us your Leviathan. Tell us a little about he's, him. He's legendary for getting immobilised. Yeah. Um, thankfully, he never got immobilised this game. He did lose his siege drill. He lost his arm. One-handed bandit. Yeah, and a knight decided to have a charge at him, and he duly dispatched a knight without the siege <laughs> drill. Um, <laughs> and he's he just he just did really well. He survived. He kept going. He did lose three whole points, so he was on one. Yeah. But had it gone to another turn, that tactical squad were pretty terrified of the Leviathan running towards them. Definitely, absolutely. So he's definitely my man of the match. Good. And David, you brought Matarian, of course. Not necessarily my oh. man of the match, sadly, due to uh, some of his failings. However, I think he's a really cool, quirky character. Mm. Um, a lot of people don't realise about his threat range and how quickly he can jump mm. up. Um, I have learnt a few lessons from playing Rich before. Uh, in our previous game, uh, Mortarian did have a bit of a duel with this very Leviathan, and uh, he lacked the punch with that armour 13, so mm. that's why he stayed well clear this game. But yeah, really, Mortarian, I love playing with him. He's a fun character, and uh, you never know what he's going to do next. Absolutely, yeah. And, and again, Mortarian, that, that shudder in the warp, that 10-inch blank move almost, it's just, yeah. it's just fantastic. He's, he's a brilliant character. Yeah, He's, he's just... really good. He's a tank as well. He mm. do, I mean, he was unlucky today, yeah. but he, he can take a lot of damage yeah, yeah. well you, you you whittled him down well but I do like playing more because he's very close to the fluff yeah. I know in a lot of yeah. the books it talks about him just suddenly stepping out of shadows and that little jump move it just feels very very narrative and very fun mm. in the game to do Fantastic. Well, fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun for everyone. Um, well, again, I, I thank you so much, guys, for coming. Uh, you don't live too far away yeah. from the 30K Channel head HQ, yeah. so yeah. I think we're going to see you again, aren't we? Yeah, I think next time it will probably be Imperial Fists and Ultramarines. Oof. And we've got a little bit of fluff to go with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I, I think in the future a rematch with the Death Guard. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm too new up at the moment, but that's pretty... Okay. It's been very close each time, and I could see it maybe going the other way next time. Uh, and we're going to try and get back from Zone Mortalis, is that right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, currently on the conveyor belt, I've got more breaches <laughs> um, and some nice Terminators with shields. Um, so, definitely looking to, to drop in the Zone Mortalis as soon as possible. Great stuff. And, and David's yeah. working on Ultramarines at the moment, aren't you? Yes, I'm a, I've got some Ultramarines. It's going to be a very narrative based army. I've done it around the Kalth uh, campaign. Great. So I'm going to have lots of infantry, all looking nice and battered mm. and on, uh, on urban bases. And hopefully I can get them on the channel soon for you guys to look at. And uh, hopefully there'll be another game that you guys can enjoy watching. Great stuff. Um, it's, it's good to note that we've taken loads and loads and loads of photos today. We've got like 200 photos from today, which is great. So when this video goes up, if you head on over to the Facebook page, check out the photo albums. There'll be a whole plethora of photos of all different stages uh, throughout the battle of these two amazing armies. So please go and check them out uh, and leave some comments. You know, the guys would love your feedback on their Definitely. armies. Uh, I would love to hear your feedback as always on the video. Um, but don't forget, go to the Facebook page, go to the Instagram page, leave me a comment, like the YouTube video. Um, thanks once again, gentlemen. I know yeah, I keep saying brilliant. it, but it's well worth mentioning. It's our first time here and I've, I've really enjoyed it. Good stuff. Yeah. It's been a great day and um, hopefully you guys will enjoy watching this as much as we've enjoyed making it because that's what really drives these videos. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, we will see you in the next Battle Report. Cheers. Mm.